Tony here again uh, from Homa. We're in the shop here in Ansonia, Connecticut, and we're going to go into changing cable or voltage in the field on a pump. Okay. Previously, we've showed you how to do that in a shop where we removed the stator housing up off the rotor and did it from underneath. Now we're actually going to show you how we would do it if we were in the field and didn't have a crane and stuff and, and maneuver it around. So the first thing we're going to do is, again, go to the field and we're going to pull paperwork for the team motor replacement cable installation. And that's going to give you a step-by-step -step procedure of how we're going to do it here today. So here, if I was going to change the cable, I'm removing two M5 hex bolts, removing it, removing my cable entry. I'm going to mark all my wires where they're connected. And if you look here, you have to look close because we don't make this easy for you. Our numbers are marked in white here and on this cable. Never use a solvent or a cleaner to these cables or the stator leads because you'll actually rub those numbers off. And once you've done that, then we're playing a guessing game and having to dope out how it's connected. So be careful never to do that. But I want to mark and write down what I have and how it's connected. Um, usually, if you get the pump from us, you'll have three locations to telling you how it's wired from the factory. You'll have a little tag up top that says it's 460, okay? And then at just above the cable entry, there'll be another tag that's taped to it that's going to tell you that it's 460. And if you were to look at the end of the cable that's going into the control panel, you'll also be marked 460, okay? At the end of the day, if any one of those three are not there, we default to looking at our sheet again and checking our wires and we can figure out how is it wired today, okay? Now we've gone ahead and we've changed these to 460 already, but if we were to look at this wiring that we have here today, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a four, five, and a six that's all tied together, okay? That's the easiest way for me to tell is it 230 or is it 460 because I'm making that little star connection is what we call it. So I have three wires connected together here, right? So if I was to look at them, and again, I'm going to take a white because I can't see. And there's a four. There's a six. And there's a five. So if I have four, five, and six together, four, five, and six together, this is telling me that I'm connected to, to 230 volts, okay? We're going to go over to 460. We've already changed our tags to show that. So I know I'm confusing you a little bit, saying you look for these to see what you have, but that's why I'm also checking it here. So I'm going to change this from the 230 volts over to 460. So again, I identified my four, five, and six. If I was to look at this again, my four, five, and six now are going to get cut from each other, and four is going to go to seven, five to eight, and six to nine, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate four, five, and six. So I will take my cutters. I want to cut this as close as I can to where the crimp is, so if I do this again, I'm not running out of, out of stator leads to work with, okay? That's my four, five, and six. And then I want to strip it back. And I'm just going to put them off to one side. Now, first what I'm going to work with is L1. L1 here, or line one, power coming in from my cable, will have one and seven connected to it. So I'm going to look for that first. And if you can see here, there's a one and a seven, which is coming from my stator, and it's going to, this should be number one. And again, you really have to look sometimes, but see, there's the one. Okay, so I'm going to separate that. Again, as close to where the crimp is as possible. Okay, that's one. So, 
four and seven is getting connected together. All right, so we'll strip these two back. All right, so now I'm going to look for four. And there is number four. And number four is going to go to seven, which is seven. So seven and four. I try to do this as neat as I can so I don't have wires going all over the place and tangling. So I'm going to bring it up and put it as neat as I can. I'm going to twist these two together. And I'm going to look again just to make sure I didn't mess up. Seven and four. I'm going to take bell connection, crimp type, put over it. And I'm going to crimp it. I'm going to check, make sure it's tight, not pulling out. And that's how you do that, those two. Now I need to bring the number one wire to L1. Okay. So now I'm going to look for number one. And that's going to go to number one here. Need to strip this back. Get the bell connector. And check again to make sure that it's tight. So we've done our first connection here to go to 460. The four, the seven, connect it together, and the one going to L1. I do this one at a time instead of cutting all my wires off when I'm just changing voltage. So I don't have a bunch of wires to mix up and, and change. So that's how you would start doing it. Now I'm going to do the other two, the five and eight together, two to two, the six and nine together, and three to three. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back to you. Okay, so we made all our connections now. So when before we had 230 volts, which meant we had the three wires connected, four, five, and six, and then seven and one, eight and two, nine and three going to one, two, and three. We've changed it, so we should have three pairs of two wires, four and seven, five and eight, six and nine. If you look here, those are those three pairs, okay? And then we have one, two, and three coming from the stator, going to one, two, and three coming from our cable. Those are our power leads now. If I was doing a complete cable change, the only other thing I would have to do is replace the brown wire with there's a screw right down in here. You can see it. It's where the ground's connected. And we always remember that. We always leave our ground wire a little longer than every other wire because, again, that's the last thing I want to leave this pump if this cable gets pulled out is the ground. Right? Then we would also have to do our thermals and connect them and our leak sensors. So seeing how all we're doing is a voltage change, we didn't have to change them. We just messed with our stator leads and our power leads. So now we're ready to put this all back into here. And as you can see, there's a massive amount of wire here that we're going to be putting into a small place. So we're going to kind of tuck that in there. But one of the things we're going to do is there's an O-ring here. And we're going to take just a little bit of grease, electric grease or grease, or whatever you have, and just put it on there so we're not putting that in there uh, dry so it, it'll work, okay? You can either use a little brush on it Or you could have used your finger and put it in there. So now I'm going to tuck stuff in here. I'm going to start tucking my three stator leads, those three pairs. I'm going to put those in first because they're not too bad. And I can get them in a little bit further. Okay, so we're tucked in here. Okay, and I look and I move this now, right? If I can move the cable entry, I'm guaranteeing I'm not pinching a wire. If I had a wire pinched up underneath here, I wouldn't be able to spin this end, cable entry. So now I'm just going to line up the screw holes, the M5s again, and put them down. Bring it down evenly. There, we just did a voltage change from 230 to 460 on a T-motor. And again, if I had cable and I was replacing the whole cable, we would have loosened up on here. We'd probably send you a new grommet but the cable restraint would stay the same. We'd put new grommets on the cable, tighten this down, 
and go on our way. So that's an easy way of doing it in the field without having to remove the stator housing because you probably don't have a way of lifting it and it's a little cleaner and less work. We can pull it up from the entry. Again, you can always go back to our website and pull the T-Motor replacement cable insulation and give you the step-by-step -step on how to do that. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.